working on several collaborative projects, not only with knowledge sharing and innovation program, as well as the other program areas in Equus One is just uh, for you, for your information, we have started organizing these capacity building programs at Ecrusat as part of enhancing the capacities of both in-house people as well as our partner organization. We have invested almost a million dollars this year, especially on these capacity building programs. The idea here is now you are aware of the CZIAR research programs, the CRPs. As part of the CRPs, we need to execute the activities uh, several research activities where the partner's involvement also very, very important. At the same time, we need to also provide uh, capacities to make sure like uh, our in-house people also executing in, in line with our CRP proposed objectives and the goals. So as part of this one, we have organized several capacity building programs. This is one more. And in this one, especially what we are doing, we are introducing various technologies and technical approaches, how we can use innovative technologies and innovative approaches in agriculture knowledge sharing. So essentially, how we are transforming research results into data, information, and education services, and making sure we are enabling them to reach to the end users, whoever we are intended to. Yeah, with that initial information, and uh, if your time permits, just we spend five to ten minutes to have a recap what we have done yesterday and before we start this session. Because that's very, very interesting what we have done yesterday. We discussed about the open educational resources. And uh, we have started with uh, how we can see the open knowledge, then how we can transform that one into curriculum, and that would be useful for transforming the students into scholars, how the massive open online courses helping in the emerging scenarios to satisfy the needs of the learner needs. Uh, Kristen Gate from Michigan State University, she has shared their ideas and also shared the work of Michigan State University. And at the same time, you might have aware of this digital green, the video documentation, especially preparing the best practices or developing the best practices to educate the smallholder farmers. In both the ways, how we are satisfying the educational needs of the students, scholars, uh, uh, the extension agents, faculty members. At the same time, how we are satisfying the educational needs of the smallholder farmers also. But now, what we are focusing this today, like uh, yesterday we have shown how we can develop the videos by identifying a specific problem or area, then developing the videos and hosting them online or providing some runtime environment to make sure that reach to the end users. And today we would like to show them how we can document uh, the videos dynamically through the Connect platform or various platforms, I'm sure you are going to cover your experiences from University of Florida, as well as we make them available offline for future access. Uh, with that uh, information, I requested Dr. Bivakar, if he can facilitate for five to 10 minutes, maybe interacting about the recap. Beautiful day with the blessings from the Almighty. Yesterday we had a very productive day. I'm sure you all uh, appreciate the way the presenters have uh, explained to you about uh, starting from connecting to the participants and then how we can help them by video production. Because today, as uh, Dr. Dilip said, we will further uh, uh, learn how the video production can be used uh, or utilized for the uh, future generation. Uh, today, of course, the Dr. Ramesh Reddy, who is a uh, very uh, well-known uh, person in this field, and he has helped us uh, exercise since last uh, so many years, and I'm sure he will be benefited by his talk. And at the end of the day, we'll try to uh, recap and 
find out how far we could proceed and how much we need to further proceed in the next two days. Uh, th thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Ramesh, few more minutes because today our information systems unit manager, you know Modi Saab, now he became the head for the unit he got promoted this year and he, he is the one, today is his day because he is organizing all these technology approaches at Ikrusat and he is briefly going to explain to all the participants what are we going to do today. Thank you, Dilip. Yeah, so today is a, we will be leveraging on web conferencing and collaboration platform, you know, how we can use this platform for sharing your knowledge. And one example is quickly coming up, like the session, which, which we are going to see next. How we are leveraging on this conferencing platform to have, you know, sessions live from remote location and all that. So one good example we are beginning with. And when day progresses, so many other examples are coming. So we'll have a basics, concept, challenges, what is going on, recent trends, all that we'll cover relating to web conferencing and online meeting solution. And we have invited Mr. Venkatesh Sharma is a, is from VS World. He has travelled from Delhi. He has spared no, he is very busy, but he has spent a lot of time for us all day. So he will be a resource person for today. He will engage us in a couple of sessions and share his knowledge with us. So this is what is coming up for the today. And in the afternoon we have a practical session where what we'll do is we'll divide the whole all the participant into three groups. So from three venue, we'll use this, how a online meeting or conferencing is possible, how people can share their videos, their presentation document, and how the platform is enabling them, and you can record them and use it later. So all that we'll see the live during the practicals. So this is what is coming for the whole day. Thank you. Thank you, Modi. Ramesh, now the floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining with us. I know it's late in the evening. I think it's almost like 10.30. I'm glad now this daylight saving actually saved one hour. Otherwise, it might be 11.30 for you. Thanks again for taking your time out, staying late in the evening, joining with us, and sharing your experiences. Now the floor is yours, Ramesh. So I'm assuming that everybody's going to hear me, so I'm going to just uh, start, start my presentation. As uh, Dilip mentioned, uh, I'm going to briefly talk about the uh, some of our programs uh, um, which we initiated about 10 years ago at the University of Florida, uh, and also our uh, collaboration with the Crusade uh, on some of the programs related to uh, um, distance education uh, using uh, e-technologies. Uh, most of you, uh, if you do not know me, some of you have met you before. Uh, I was born in Hyderabad uh, and um, went to school in Hyderabad, uh, a graduate of Angra. Uh, at that time it used to be uh, AP Agriculture University. I worked in uh, Hyderabad for a few, a few years and before I moved to the United States. Uh, so what I like to do is briefly touch base with you, share some of our experiences uh, related to uh, uh, some of the e-technologies we use uh, in our distance education program. Uh, the basically, uh, the three points I want to address. One, I think, is the uh, we were fo our focus was mainly on capacity building. Uh, our initiative started with a project we we had jointly with ICRISAT and other Indian agriculture universities. Uh, this was the Agriculture Knowledge Initiative. Uh, program uh, and it, it, it got funded through USAID uh, to work on a capacity building uh, uh, technologies that can be used for capacity building uh, in developing countries. So the main goals of this program was to strengthen and enhance the knowledge transfer uh, and the learning materials and also develop partnerships uh, among participating institutions uh, including ECOSAT and, and the other Indian agriculture universities. Uh, so that we can employ some available in information and communication technologies to foster individual and institutional capacity. And also we wanted to improve skills and application of innovative e-technologies through knowledge sharing and increasing digital learning 
and the resources and training. So I'm going to show you some examples of kind of e-technologies we've been using, uh, not only in educational program, but also for the extension on outreach. Okay, some of the highlights uh, uh, and the key successes we uh, experienced for um, last several years or so. Uh, we use uh, a number of innovative e-technologies to teach our distance education courses. Uh, these courses are offered not only as a short courses, uh, but also on a regular semester long courses for a degree program. Uh, we, we have online collaborative software, primarily we use Adobe Connect, the, the one actually you, you also use. Uh, and then we also have the digital recordings of all our lectures uh, in a small modules. You know, each lecture is no more than 15-20 minutes. Uh, we have a whole bunch of lectures and that's offered uh, to students uh, uh, over a period of one semester. And then also students can do some online lab uh, using virtual computer lab where they can um, uh, ex uh, conduct exercises. Uh, for example, I think if you, somebody wants to do some modeling exercise, some of them want to use some GIS uh, exercises, so we can do a virtual computer lab. We're also getting into more virtual chemistry labs, virtual biology labs, so that's actually coming up now, and so next couple of years or so, we should have those labs in place. And we offer a wide range of distance education courses. I'll show, I'll show you some examples in a few minutes. Uh, one of the reasons uh, for our success is uh, we have a number of dedicated, highly motivated instructors. Uh, they bought into the idea of distance education. And many, as you know, many traditional uh, instructors do not believe in distance education. Uh, but we embrace the idea of distance education uh, some 10 years ago uh, at University of Florida. Uh, our program is the one of the first ones uh, offered uh, at University of Florida. So now I think we have, we graduated maybe um, several uh, st students with master's program. Right now we have 75 graduate students in the program from all over the world. So what kind of programs we offer? We have a graduate education, uh, uh, two programs. One uh, program uh, is an environmental science, and the second program we just started last, last year is an agroecology. And agroecology is picking up quite a bit, and this program is jointly offered between our department and as well as agronomy department. And we also have started an undergraduate program in environmental management. Uh, what, what happened was just recently, University of Florida uh, was awarded some $15 million from the state of Florida to start an online education program to reach a broader group of students in the state. Uh, as a part of this one, University of Florida selected five online pro undergraduate programs, and our program is one of them, which is, which is an environmental management program. So that program is, is now offered starting 2014. Uh, all four-year program will be uh, online, and so they really don't need to have to come to University of uh, campus. Uh, these students can be enrolled from any, anywhere from the state of Florida uh, and then get a degree from uh, University of Florida. And we also have, in addition to regular degree programs, uh, we started uh, certificate programs. So in the certificate programs, uh, a, st a student can take about two to three, three courses, and then we actually give them a certificate in a, in a given program. Uh, so students don't have to be in a degree program to obtain a certificate. But once they get a certificate program, they can transfer those credits to a regular program and, and get into graduate program or undergraduate program. And we also offer short courses both on-site and off-site. Like Dilip mentioned, uh, we offer uh, short courses on a regular basis. Uh, or the demand basis uh, uh, at ICRISAT, and these short courses are advertised all over Southeast Asia, and the students or uh, scientists are enrolled um, uh, in this course, and these courses vary from uh, subject matter to subject matter, uh, the mostly in uh, agriculture and natural resources. So we just completed one course with Dr. Suhaswani's program, and we plan to teach one course on crop modeling sometime in March. And then there's a course being scheduled for uh, summer uh, on wetlands for water treatment purpose. So they vary. The co as you can see, the courses vary 
quite a bit depending on the needs and the demand of, uh, for these courses in the region. The, one of the reasons we actually uh, started this institutional program because uh, our programs are spread all over the state. Uh, as you can see here, every blue dot uh, you see here uh, is a research ed education center where we have regular faculty members and also the students. So to reach this broad group of students, University of Florida is here in Gainesville, uh, Miami is somewhere here, uh, and Fort Lauderdale, uh, and then Orlando is somewhere here. So you, as you can see, we are spread all over the state, and then in order to reach all these students, so we, we, we needed some mechanism uh, to effectively communicate our programs uh, to these students. So one program, we, we, we felt that using the distance education technologies, uh, that's how we started the program back in 2003. Uh, so I think this program has taken off quite well, and it's a very demanding program, uh, and it's very cost effective, and also it reaches a broader group of audience, uh, students who otherwise cannot come to the main campus. So, so that we can reach people, um, not only just in the state of Florida, we are st students from all over the United States, and also from overseas, uh, we are students from India, uh, Africa, uh, South America, and, and, other, and other locations. So in addition to our program, uh, uh, our College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, which we are part of that college, also offers programs, uh, master's program in a number of other topics. For example, we have distance education program now in place in agricultural education and communication, entomology and nematology, uh, family youth and community science, fisheries and aquatic sciences, and forest resource and conservation, and including our soil and water science. So all these programs were modeled pretty much based on the programs we developed in back in 2003. And we also host of undergraduate programs now, uh, which are also uh, use the same model uh, throughout the campus. There are about over 150 plus courses are offered now uh, under distance education mode. So our programs, like I mentioned before, we have, we have a distance education track in soil and water science. Uh, we offer a distance education track in environmental science, and we just started an agroecology program jointly with the agronomy department. So together, we have over 100 graduate students taking these courses. Certificate programs, like I mentioned before, the student or anybody who is interested in given topics, they can take, get into the certificate program, but they don't have to get admitted to graduate programs. So this certificate program does not require the student has to be enrolled in a degree program. So we have certificate program in land resource management, soil ecosystem services, uh, wetlands and water resource management, bioremediation, and soil water and public health. Uh, so these uh, programs are offered mainly for uh, uh, candidates who are not interested in a degree program but want to get specialization in a given topic. A very popular program. So we have about 50 uh, students actually taking these certificate programs from all over the United States. Okay, the e-technologies use, what kind of technology? We use a, basically a course management system, which is Sakai, uh, which is adapted by University of Florida, so we are mandated to use Sakai. Uh, our online communication comes primarily through Adobe Connect. Uh, these are recorded lectures, our webinars. Uh, we have chat sessions. Chat sessions will be just like the conference we have now, and we use the similar format where the students can be uh, in, uh, enrolled into this chat session so we can communicate with them directly. For every course we offer, once a week we have two hour chat session. So that will be a synchronous mode so where they can actually direct communication with the students. So this is the kind of thing not typically done for most of the classes. Uh, but we wanted to keep our program more interactive. Uh, so that's the reason we started uh, these more uh, chat sessions. Uh, for us, I think it's very, very important. Uh, one thing we discipline ourselves that we will not compromise the quality of our degree programs because we we are 
uh, students are getting a degree from University of Florida, so we had to maintain the standards of University of Florida. So admission standards to our graduate programs, undergraduate programs, are same as the students who will come to regular campus. So there's no, uh, there's not, a, there's no difference between the distance education program and the campus program with respect to quality, with respect to standards, with respect to the requirements for admission. Also, as a part of the Agricultural Knowledge Initiative program, which we uh, uh, had uh, jointly funded between uh, India and uh, United States, uh, we developed this uh, uh, reus reusable learning object system, which we call it EcoLearnIt. Uh, Dr. Sabine Grunwald, professor in our department, uh, developed uh, this platform uh, where you could actually record uh, small modules of um, various topics and uh, which we call them reusable learning objects and they can be used for your training programs or they can be used for uh, any other purpose you may want to use. Uh, we have about over 150 of those topical areas now archived uh, on our website and I'll show you that website in a minute. Uh, it's, it's a free for you to use. All you have to do is register uh, online and then, um, and then you can develop your own topic and then publish that one as a part of this system. So here's an example of the recorded lecture. So if this is, a, in this case, I'm, I'm lecturing the class uh, using the format we, we're doing right now. So you can see is a PowerPoint slide and where I can actually highlight things here and show them uh, the kind of things we do. Uh, and then I'm lecturing this one. So this particular lecture probably will last about 15 minutes or so. And the students are asked to watch these lectures before they come to chat session. So every week we assign what lectures they need to watch and come prepared for the chat session. And the typical chat session looks like this. Uh, in this case, Dr. Inglet, Kanika Inglet, uh, she is uh, conducting a chat session where she uses various uh, techniques. One, she used the regular chat where students can type. And then typically what we do, I think, is I discourage this very much because I don't want them to just type. Uh, I want them to speak, just like they would speak in a real class. So there's a bunch of students registered here, you can see uh, for this chat session, they all have microphones so they can talk. Uh, and then we have the PowerPoint slide displays and also Dr. Inglet is explaining, so she can write equations or some questions here at some topical areas on the writing board where we use tablet PC. So in this case we use tablet PC as, a, as our chalkboard where we can write uh, and then also we use PowerPoint and then we we'll highlight here and also they can use the chat session by typing and also they have the, uh, the audio. They can also talk um, and, and then converse with the uh, instructor. We do not use the video for everybody because that takes a bandwidth. So we only instructor, they can see the instructor, uh, but the others will have only primarily microphone. So here's some examples of the courses. Uh, since I made this slide, uh, uh, we, we actually uh, had more courses. I did not update this slide. We have a number of courses at undergraduate level. Uh, these courses primarily support two, uh, one degree program, which is called environmental management program. And also we have several graduate courses. A graduate program is much more developed because this has been in business for about 10 years now. Undergraduate program is only about three to four years old. So we're still adding courses as we get uh, um, in, instructors who are interested in teaching new courses. And also we have a course, one credit hour course on reusable learning objects. So this course actually uh, provides you the, the, uh, uh, the training on how to use the, this EcoLearn platform to develop RLOs. So here's the EcoLearning website. Uh, so you can go to the EcoLearning website and then there's a place you can actually get into it. Uh, and then uh, you can register into that uh, website and seek permission. And then you can develop your own topic you would like to uh, develop an RLO and then you can record it and then you can publish it. We have a archived uh, a online journal. We kind of created an online journal where you can publish this RLO 
so what happens in that situation, so you actually submit your RLO to the journal and then it will go through the peer review and then once it's accepted for publication, it will be published online. So right now there are about 150 RLOs actually already published. Uh, you can visit this website and take a look at those. So this program came out of the pro joint project we had with ICRISAT uh, and other agricultural universities and University of Florida worked together and then we conducted workshops at ICRISAT a couple of times on this EcoLearnIt and also several participants from ICRISAT and other universities came to University of Florida and went through this training uh, 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 on learning this platform. So here's the, the whole idea started back almost, I don't know, 2007 or 2006, I don't know, it's a number of years ago. The, the vision we had was to develop a, a global education platform uh, and we called it International Education Center. So this is primarily, a, a idea was to develop a consortium of educators in agriculture, natural resource environment and bring them together uh, via online so that we can share our knowledge and then uh, and offer courses jointly and use the expertise both not only just at University of Florida but also other universities jointly. Uh, so this is, 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 a, is a long process uh, but I think we are on the right track and then we just started this one a few years ago. Uh, we still need to do a lot of work to make this a reality uh, but I think the things are happening uh, as a part of this education center We've been offering this, the short courses, on-site short courses at ICRISAT on a regular basis. Uh, so here's some examples of the uh, activities we ha we conducted at the at ICRISAT. Uh, we have the on-site short courses, like I mentioned before. Uh, we have online courses which are available for students to take. So uh, graduate students who are conducting research at ICRISAT. Uh, have taken courses from University of Florida. Uh, we have a joint graduate student training with ICRISAT scientists. Uh, our undergraduate students actually come to ICRISAT conduct research, have research experience and we provide short-term training for some of the scientists uh, from ICRISAT and other Indian, Indian agriculture universities come to University of Florida. We provide the training. Uh, so we try to maintain as technology uh, and knowledge task for using some of these technologies and we are involved in conducting the symposia and workshop. So the, it's a, we do a number of activities which are mutually beneficial, uh, both for ICRISAT and as well as uh, University of Florida, in collaboration with the Indian Council of Agricultural Research and other uh, uh, agricultural universities in India. It's a very rewarding experience for me. Um, uh, one of the reasons I was more interested in, in this joint venture is because of my association with India uh, because I was born in India, uh, in Hyderabad, and I had this passion to do something, uh, a, a joint program between India and, and uh, United States, and so I had this opportunity to do it, and we were fortunate to have uh, excellent collaborators from India uh, to uh, work with us. Uh, so our long-term goal is to expand this global consortium to uh, other CG centers. Uh, and also work with the select universities within the United States and then bring them into this group. Uh, we worked with, uh, uh, like to work, uh, already worked with ICAR and uh, select universities and we would like to expand their platform, uh, especially the short courses both online as well as on-site short courses. Uh, and also we started this short course program with China. Uh, we've been offering these courses in China uh, for the last two, three, two years or so. And then we also started a program with Brazil. Uh, the MRAPA is very much interested in joining us uh, as a part of this program. So, so we are expanding, but it's going to take a little more time and effort to do that one. Uh, so hopefully we will be successful in the next few years. Uh, with that, uh, uh, I conclude uh, uh, my presentation. Uh, I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. So here are the three websites if you want to um, browse through some time, you can get into our website and take a look at our distance education programs and also you can go to our college website, College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, uh, that can give you information on other programs we have and then there's a new program I talked to you about EF Online, this is a completely undergraduate program where 
the five degree programs are currently being offered and ours is one of them and then hopefully they will have a lot more programs in the next few years or so. With that, uh, I conclude my presentation and I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you for this opportunity to make this presentation. Thank you, Ramesh. It's indeed a good start for the day with your lecture this morning. Uh, but before we go for the question and answer session, let me share with you just an update, like when we are inaugurating this capacity building program, we have also launched one student scholarship initiative, as well as signed an agreement between Angro and the Crusade on a specific collaborative activity collaborative activities. So that's essentially the virtual classrooms, preparing future faculty, specific course and plan doctors program, and student scholarship program. The name that student scholarship program as J. Raghutam Reddy and William D. Dar student scholarship program. And uh, the good thing is the Anglo completely providing support. So that's they are investing almost like 100 lakhs, 200,000 US dollars. So that's a good sign that shows the interest of the state agriculture universities. And during the meetings, the vice chancellor of Angro, he mentioned, we need to think of having some program or a similar kind of proposal or an activity on the short courses. So I'm sure like maybe we can expand some of these activities, the short courses. Let me also recognize one board member from Angro, as well as university officer who is participating in this one and they are instrumental in making this collaborative activity, further strengthening the relationship between the international organizations and the state agriculture universities. Let me recognize uh, Dr. Venkunaidu. Venkunaidu, can you show that? He's, the, he's one of the board members of ANGRO, and he's the associate dean. And uh, Viran Janelu, He's the chief librarian. Nice to meet you, sir. And he's also very active. He's also very actively engaged in a program that actually created and also executed by Indian Council of Agricultural Research. You might have heard of uh, eGrant, the creating uh -huh. the online courses and the digital courses to offer these virtual learning platforms for yeah. the learner participants in India, as well as this can also think of having this one for the global learner participants also. So there are some of these updates I wanted to share with you. Probably now we need to move on thinking of how we can involve the state agricultural yeah. universities because they, they are interested in that one. That's what we were discussing in that uh, boardroom meeting with the university officers. Okay. It, Thanks again, and uh, if uh, any questions or anything, any comments or any thoughts, yeah, please tell your name and institution and ask the question. Dr. Gunjal. like the soil water and public health. See the soil itself is a very big subject, the water itself is a very big subject and public health is another big subject. So this program is a certificate level program. See soil water and public health, is it an awareness program or the program after completion will get a credit to go at higher level? This program, the Soil, Water and Public Health, is really talks about the issues uh, that is affected by the what happens in the soil and water, mm -hmm. like soil contamination, water contamination, uh, the food safety issues, and all those are linked to this uh, soil. Uh, so the this is pretty much gives you the introductory type uh, awareness, like you said. Uh, and from there onwards, they can get to go to graduate program. And uh, so, so some of these this courses we offer, 
are, are, are now used as a part of the program of the public health program at University of Florida. So, so if you are to have a public health program, a graduate program, so one can use these courses as a part of the degree program. Because what we're trying to show here in this program, uh, what we're trying to show in this program, our program is the soils and water issues are uh, much broader than the food production. So we're looking at the beyond the food production, uh, we look at the public health issues, natural resource issues, uh, industrial issues so like uh, remediation of contaminated sites. Or th so the application of soil and water sciences is much broader than just the food production. Uh, good morning, I am Sanjay Chaudhary from Ahmedabad University. Uh, my question is related to design of ILOs because each ILO is to be used later on for subsequent courses. Now, have you prepared any guidelines or design specifications to define ILO so that each faculty down the line will follow those guidelines and standards? Thank you. Yes, uh, I, I think that we we, the, we we use the our RLS vary quite a bit uh, depending on the instructor. Uh, the RLS uh, we have in our library uh, at Eco Learnage uh, are based on the individual contributions of scientists from all over the world. So they may take a small topic like um, maybe some irrigation or uh, fertilizer recommendation or uh, anything, a small topic and then develop an RLO for maybe about five to ten minutes RLO. So they want to keep these small topics uh, and then you can select those topics and compile them and then make a course out of it if you want. And those RLOs are available, uh, they are at this website. Uh, for the degree programs, uh, we do it take a different approach. Uh, in that case, we have a structured program uh, and then the, these RLOs are uh, last 15 or 20 minutes each, they're a lot longer, uh, and a given topic, and they are, they're offered at two different levels. If it's undergraduate level, it's offered at lower level. If it's a graduate level, it's offered at a higher level. Uh, so students can actually uh, take this, uh, watch these lectures as a part of the degree program. So for, for a course on soil and water chemistry, uh, there could be the whole bunch of uh, RLOs um, uh, recorded uh, using the Adobe Connect format uh, and then they're available. And also you, you can take those, uh, divide them into smaller units and then use it for some other purpose. Uh, but usually what we do when we offer these RLOs as a part of the degree program, we keep them all of them together because there's a continuity from one lecture to another lecture. So, so it's, it's important that these students follow those lectures in sequence so that they can understand the concepts better. So there are two types of RLOs. One RLOs types are used mainly in the degree programs and the second RLOs are used more for extension and outreach programs. And for those, uh, small RLOs are really good uh, for each extension topic. Uh, we have about five to ten minutes um, um, presentation. Um, with some videos in there or PowerPoint slides or whatever. Uh, you can see the whole bunch of examples at the equivalent website and also there's instructions on how to design these things and they're clearly explained. Uh, uh, so you can you can watch those. Um, uh, actually RLOs were developed just to create a RLO also. So you can actually look at those presentations of, uh, about RLOs and then get an idea on how to develop these things. So it's, it's, uh, it's up to you really, you know, how you want to, uh, each, each candidate actually uses their own imagination and, and then uh, develop these RLOs and some of them use some really cool videos, some of them have presentations, some of them, you know, they, they do all kinds of things. Uh, but each, each one has its own uniqueness, uh, but the, what we look for is the effectiveness of the communication. Are we communicating the material in a way that the, the clientele or the audience who are using this one uh, get the message. So there's a self-assessment at the end of each RLO, so that will give an idea on how effective our communication was.
thank you Ramesh. Yeah, with, with your permission, uh, some of the participants are very new to the RLO. Probably for the, if you permit me, like I just uh, inform them the definition of RLO and also how we have been doing this one. Would that be okay? Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> okay, so what Ramesh been telling, like maybe the small and uh, the larger RLOs, the reusable learning objects, how do we define that one? Uh, at least uh, even Dr. Gunjal, when he was here, he always come up with these definitions and also whenever we follow the specific standards, each standard define the RLOs in specific way. But anyone, how they define this one, RLO is a reusable learning object. The learning object essentially delivers a specific instruction to, to give a specific learning outcome. For example, the simple thing, how to read a thermometer that, that say, now RLO, the reusable learning object, okay? And the other one, how to develop a thermometer. These two are two different things. How to read a reading on a thermometer that completely provides you an instruction and following the instructional designing principles, at the same time the learning technology standards. How to develop a thermometer is completely different. But when you are developing a course material on thermometer, it would be one component, reusable learning object, and how to develop a thermometer also, one component. The learning object is combination of specific assets. When you were hearing yesterday, while developing the video, the guy was asking what is the basic unit of video development and he mentioned that's a shot. In the similar way, while designing or developing learning objects or reusable learning objects, the basic unit is that's an image or a word document or a picture, video, PPT, whatever that may be, that's a basic unit. The combination of these units provides us a learning object. For example, if I need to develop a Word document that combines an image, the text, and any kind of graph or anything. So the total thing we can consider that's a learning object because that delivers a specific instruction. If I'm developing a video that combines an image, audio, the background audio, music, and all these are a combination of specific assets, gives you a learning object. When you combine these learning objects, you can create a the learning unit, that's an organization. It, it's how we are organizing a course material, bringing a learning module. Once we combine all these learning objects, we get a learning module. It's very, very basic. Some of you are already aware of all these things. Whoever new to that one. So Ramesh explained like, how we can bring them into practice in uh, the extension courses, extension learning modules, as well as the academic learning modules. So, thank you, Ramesh. If you have any more questions, we can. Yeah, please. Dr. Uh, Mishra, <clears throat> can I add uh, what you have said and then the leave? Uh, of course, the name itself explains it is a reusable learning objective. So it is a reusable. And most of the time, these reusable learning objectives are generic in nature. For example, uh, fertilizer calculations. It's very generic in nature. But that can be used either in uh, uh, potato or in uh, sorghum or in sugarcane. So it can be reusable. And then there is nothing like specific standard. It depends upon the subject. But it needs to be a shot and sharp. So the main purpose of this is uh, not to invent the wheel again. So suppose if you have developed an RLO, perhaps that RLO can be used by X and Y and Z. That is the idea of uh, Dr. Ramesh that now they are publishing online. You can uh, use it, you can pick it up, and then you can incorporate into an online online uh, learning course. So there is nothing like specific uh, standards or other. One thing is it needs to be a shot and shop, and some of these RLOs can be connected. Uh, there, there should be a, a, a possibility to connect that with, uh, uh, for example, we are talking about the fertilizer management, and there may be in a video, video is an RLO, and then your text is an RLO, and then you can connect these two RLOs to make it uh, 
place of jacking. So there is nothing specific standards for that, but it is upon, depending upon uh, the subject matter. Thank you very much, uh, Ramesh, and the lead for the new job. It's very common in software industry, for example, if you could look at this object-oriented program in Java, Professor Chaudhary is here, they define the classes. And once they have that one, they don't write the code again. They just reuse that code and put it into that particular program. It's the same thing, like how we are reusing this one. Okay, any more questions? Uh, uh, hello, uh, Dr. Ramesh. I'm Srinivas from uh, Digital Grid. So we uh, work for smallholder farmers. So my, my question is uh, basically regarding like you know the applicability of the technologies uh, which you discussed uh, uh, for the smallholder farmers. So like uh, do you see, for example, like national experience is related to learning the courses and they have some aspirations. So uh, uh, can you use these types of skills to uh, technologies to impact the skills of let's say the farmer who completed just high school? I think I, I missed the, your question. Can you repeat that question one more time so I can hear you? Uh, so, uh, Basically, like, you know, the technologies uh, which we discussed during this uh, session uh, is like uh, uh, for students. Most of the students are basically self-motivated. They have their own aspirations to develop a uh, passion for the subject. Uh, like, how can we leverage the technologies or like, the modification of the technologies which we discussed to impact skills on farmers? You know, in the case of farmers, like, they have to impact the skills. We have to basically, you know, bring them on board uh, about the technologies or about the stuff which we are doing. So I'm just like asking like, you know, the applicability of uh, the stuff which we discussed at the small farmer farmers level. Do you see any... Srinivas, the, the question comes to the Ramesh, but uh, he, he deals with a different set of farmers. Because the farmers in United States, they have the bachelor degrees and the master's degrees, okay? Here we are dealing a different set of farmers. Having said that, let, let's leave it to Ramesh how he responds. I, 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 I think the, 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 the farmers, I think, in India, for example, uh, you know, I think one of the effective communication I've seen is the not as much audio, uh, more, I think, like a YouTube type, a short video, something which can capture the imagination of uh, uh, somebody's watching that uh, video, you know, the, the growers actually can really enjoy uh, short videos um, on uh, regular programs on TV or, uh, or even our, uh, on their cell phone, like everybody has cell phone in India now, most of them, are, so you can communicate with um, uh, the farmers uh, in that fashion. Whereas in the U.S., in Florida at least, the, the, the farmers are, the, you know, we don't have any small farmers anymore. Uh, most of the farmers are large holdings, uh, they are corporate farmers, uh, so they really don't need much of the extension from universities. So we are we're really facing that problem because the, uh, like the, in Florida there is a big sugar industry uh, which has their own extension program, their own research program, so they hardly need University of Florida to any, anything for them. So we, we address it, some small farmers, uh, but we don't have that many left in U.S. Uh, the most of our uh, extension activities are done through uh, small uh, RLOs and, and also mostly the written materials. Uh, we have a large database called the, uh, the digital management system. These are the articles. We have two to two page articles on library at University of Florida's library and anybody can archive those. Uh, the website is called Solutions for Your Life. Solutions for Your Life is the the uh, website. So if you go to Solution for Your Life website at University of Florida, uh, you will find any topic you want to know. You want to know how uh, a thermostat works in your, to control your air conditioning in your house. There's a, there's a small uh, article on that one. So things like that one we have. What we're promoting now is we want University of Florida to convert those written materials 
into more digital RLOs. So that's that's where I think we have a challenge right now. We're still working on to change that culture. It's not going to be that easy uh, because they don't see the value of really creating a lot of digital RLOs at this time because everybody can just download the material and read the material. Uh, but in Indian condition, that may not be the case. You have to really uh, adapt what is the best for your conditions there because one thing we cannot translate some of the RLOs which may be good for the United States may not be good for India or Africa for our other countries so each one I think is uh, deserves its own way of developing for local conditions I, th I think that like Indian uh, universities are doing excellent job what I've seen some of the uh, RLOs developed uh, are really good for local conditions I've seen ICRISAT uh, knowledge initiative programs I think so really designed for local conditions so that's what I would do it uh, I would not really follow any other ones but use the one for your local conditions yeah thank you Ramesh is there any other question we are just add to that one Srinivas, the smallholder farmer in United States, at least in Iowa, where I live for some time, that's 1,500 hectares. And yeah. the large farmer, the average land holding is 10,000 hectares. At a research lab. So those are the conditions different, but we need to localize the issue. Yeah, Dr. Almost already we have implemented a project, NAIP project on RLO. In that we have developed 500 RLOs on various themes, INM, IPM, value addition, nursery management, Dr. Gunjal, or Ekrisat, Dr. Dilip also later on. Then TNU were the partners in that project. So in that we have developed the mechanism to to together the, to bring the or to aggregate the RLO into courses. So there are 21 courses now. So any farmers or any students they can they can group the RLO into a course. That mechanism we have developed in that. So project. how uh, how do you, or, you. Uh, evaluate the effectiveness of that RLOs? Uh, what kind of assessment do you use to really? Uh, yeah, we have developed that evaluation in that we have given the short questions, and the, like multiple choice questions, the two and five questions, the filling the blanks type of questions. So automatic evaluation process we have built in each RLO. That for individual evaluation, the huge goes to. The core, when we develop the course, then that will collapse in the course also, that evaluation process. That type of things we have developed. And then IIT Kanpur, they have helped in developing this platform. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you, Ramesh. Uh, any, any other questions, suggestions, or curious doubt? Okay, if, if we haven't have anything from our side, Ramesh, do you, do you have any questions for us or for any learner participants here in this program? No, I, I really don't, but I really enjoyed uh, my conversation with everybody. Uh, and uh, if I can do uh, provide you any information from Minister of Florida, you have my email, so drop me a note, uh, and uh, we'll happy to make connections for you to uh, meet, uh, make contact with other faculty members who may be able to help you uh, in uh, certain areas. Uh, and if anybody looking for a training program, you want to come to University of Florida, you're most welcome to do it. And, and then um, and the Dilip is there and he can actually uh, make those connections for you to come to University of Florida. Again, Dilip, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you, to the group. Ramesh, we have to say that one. Please accept our sincere gratitude and heartfelt thanks for joining us. I, I know it's almost like 11.15 for you, am I right? So it's late in the evening. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. I know you have joined with us on a very short notice. And
thank you very much for accepting all our requests and joining with us in these important meetings. Thank you. Thank you, thank you thank so you, much. You. I will look forward to connecting with you over thank you. phone. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Would you like to announce that? Yeah. So, friends, now we have an option. No? Before we start something new, we don't have much time between now and break. So, one option is we may break now for tea and come back at 10. Do you think it's okay? Okay. So, we'll break now and come back at 10. And then there will be continuous new sessions will proceed. Thank you. Doesn't this online courses have the handicap of not providing the localized information? Or do we have online courses separately for different states like Andhra in particular? Like if you just go for agronomy, agronomical practices, some might be generalized and some they would have been localized information. So does this online courses doesn't have that handicap of not providing the localized information? That matters, like maybe that's usually based on the need. For example, if you can look at uh, in a few places, like Ms. Swaminathan Research Foundation, they mandate these to serve these uh, local farmers. And if you look at their village knowledge centers and rural knowledge centers, you see only these courses in local languages. We don't say that an online because farmers they are not able to access that one online. Okay, but if they step in into the center, they can watch that one. And in Maharashtra, they make it in Marathi. If you can look at the digital green video, the follow a different kind of local system. language. They develop yeah. these videos. But now the emerging one is, I don't say that's an online, that's a mobile mediated education, that's in small voice messages, where you guys are doing. You say that's an information advisory, but if you develop two minutes or three minutes audio modules on the nutrition or the vaccination or health, anything, you can look at that one, that's like an online education through the mobile mediated and <coughs> learning. So, the way you are seeing, but it's essentially to see how you are satisfying the needs of educational needs of the various stakeholders, rather than we have an internet or online platform, how we can use that one. It's not a supply driven, it's not a top down approach. We need to understand the social acceptance of the technology. We need to understand what would, would work in a given kind of situation. Yeah, that's pertaining to farmers, but how about the courses offered at University of Florida? Like if I am a student, taking the student community. So we will be more focusing on generalized information like environmental science or soil science. But see, we cannot go to... Not only University mm -hmm. of Florida, even you can see many distance yeah, learning courses mm -hmm. in various land grant states universities. Okay? Why this idea has born now? Because whenever we see any challenges or any problems, we always look for the solutions. Yes, there are several aspirants here in India and even in other parts of the developing world would like to have the United States degree. But there are several reasons. Sometimes they finish off all GRE, but they fail to get the visa, they stay back here. But if you have a wish to get a degree, how you can still pursue that one without going to the United States? That's all like University of Florida, they're offering these things. Then you may ask, like, what is the role of Ikusa? or what is the role of other partner organizations in various parts of the world. If you are pursuing uh, arts or commerce courses, you don't need to deal with the practical. But if you are pursuing a soil chemistry or kind of biology or anything, yeah, which is dealt with the practicals and labs, as well as you need to have a close supervision of an expert. That's where they see the value of these local organizations. In addition to that one, you may not be able to expect all these individuals in the developing world they have an internet connectivity and the good uh, facilities. So they, they may come here and they can pursue the courses based on their offices located. Even Igno Praveen is here and Igno they have these uh, the educational centers everywhere. Weekly ones, these Igno people, the study centers, they go there and they meet. It's the concept. How you are designing and developing your own model to make it more successful, especially 
to deliver your goal and the objective according to the particular context. That's very, very important. Hope that answers some extent. Yeah. Okay, it's time to go for tea and we can continue have a discussion.